Good morning. I'm very happy to have you here. Um, as uh, I have today with me uh, two of the colleagues of the Desire Project, uh, we are doing some uh, small interviews, informal talks to present the partners because I'm sure you want to know them a little bit better. So we are uh, a number of partners in Desire. This is an Erasmus project called Design for All Methods to Create Age-Friendly Housing. And for this first newsletter, we will introduce the Slovakian partners. And in this case, we have today here with us uh, the two colleagues from the Institute of Ethnology and Social Anthropology of the Slovak Academia of Sciences. And they are Lubika Volanska and Sonia Luther. Many thanks to, for, for both of you to, to accept it to do this. Uh, I think I could pronounce the name of the Institute well, which is already a victory. <laughs> Thank you for instructing me. Uh, and maybe this could be the first question. So tell me, um, what is the Institute? What does it do? Uh, why, why are you interested in the project? Okay, if I may start. So our institute is one of the leading institutions uh, in the field of ethnological and anthropological research. Uh, to put it simply, we study past and present people, uh, everyday, their everyday lives, uh, their perspectives. Ultimately, what interests us is uh, what makes us human and how we differ from one another. Oh, that sounds very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, sounds simple, but it's it's quite difficult actually, and quite complicated to to comprehend this. So at the institute, uh, we we uh, well the research focus is evenly distributed between basic research and I would say problem oriented or applied research. And uh, we also uh, put emphasis on interdisciplinary uh, overlaps. So we often cooperate with other scientists, be it sociologists, uh, geographers, or in case of uh, desire projects, architects, designers, and others. And we build mainly on field research, uh, where we use uh, quali mainly qualitative uh, methods to obtain data such as participant observation, in-depth interviews and others. And in DESIRE project, we are providing the social scientific uh, perspective uh, on seniors and on housing. That's very nice. Well, I think that now everyone who is listening is looking forward to know you a bit better. So maybe we could start by, by Luba and then we go back to you and, and ask, okay, we now know the organization, so can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Okay, I hello everybody, uh, and I'm glad to be a part of this wonderful team. And it, it's really a pity that we have don't have the chance to to meet in persona. But uh, one day in the future, we are hoping that we will see each other face to face because we are usually working face to face. So for ethnologists or anthropologists, it's really a problem this this uh, COVID nineteen pandemics because it completely destroyed the way of working we we used to uh, work. And um, this is actually also my obsession, uh, which is the biographical, autobiographical research. That means that I love to talk to people. I love to interview them. I love to take uh, care of what they think um, about their perspective of, of life. And um, actually, it's not important if what their memories are true. So we are not the true seekers. We are seeking for the interpretation of meanings, like for what... Uh, what her his or her interpretation uh, means for for nowadays life. So it's it's really fascinating, and uh, I think there's nothing more fascinating than than human stories or the stories of of men and women, because they're so there's a plenty of variety and and um, well, it's life. So that's my <laughs> first obsession, and the second one is probably generations and family. Uh, and intergenerational relationships, how different memories are passed from one generation to other, and uh, why is it so? Why some memories are selected and some are omitted? And what does it mean for the, for the family history? And it's, it's sometimes uh, really also about the space, about how we perceive space, uh, how the, all the generations perceive space, how differently we do perceive our space, uh, that's our environment that's surrounding us. So these are our fascinations. 
And, yeah. and that's very related to desire, the use of space, right, in, in different aging age groups and, and in different generations. So this must also interest you in that sense, right? Yes, sure. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the reasons why we are here. And also maybe um, I think we both with Sonia have, have uh, experience with, with teaching and with also speaking to other generations. And that, that's also one thing that we we, we perceive for, for really important just to pass the knowledge and, and try to find the balance between the ivory tower. We are often closed in and the applied research Sonia was speaking about that it's, it's really how to get the knowledge from the oh. research to people that really need that and how we can make, I don't know, it, it might sound like a phrase, but sometimes I really think about how to make a difference, how to make mm. the lives of people better. No, that's so nice. And, and it shows so much commitment, which is very nice to hear. <laughs> so, Sonia, now you need to beat this. Let us know about you. How will you beat this speech? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, actually, uh, me and Lubka, uh, our interests are like the, the focus of desire is very nicely reflected in our interests, uh, I would say, because as Lubka is uh, focusing on seniors, uh, I focus uh, on material culture and housing and home environment. So this is the side which I come from. Uh, so I focus on material culture, uh, visual anthropologist. I'm also a visual uh, anthropologist. I uh, do ethnographic movies, uh, family identity, memory. So these are these are my my topics. And uh, also, what? Uh, sorry, I don't know if people know what is a visual anthropologist. <laughs> you can just yeah. Well, uh, what I do. <laughs> what what I do apart from uh, I would say classical research is that I do uh, ethnographic uh, films. So I'm a filmmaker as well. I, I direct movies and I'm oh, author of movies. Okay. Yes, but I don't <laughs> use this as much in uh, desire. But uh, what really maybe. helps me? Is, maybe who knows? <laughs> not yet. Let's see. But. Uh, uh, what helps me is uh, focus on relationship between people and their material environment, and uh, so so this is what I what I focus on in Desire project. So people, their material environment, uh, their housing, which we don't focus on as anthropologists as only housing, but we uh, really connect it to the concept of home and belonging and uh, creating your own uh, surroundings around you and how how people influence their environment. And but it also goes the opposite way around how our material environment shapes us. Yeah, no, that's very interesting. I'm seeing all of this personal story that you portrayed a little bit, right? Like who we are, what what we feel and then how this relates to housing. Sounds super interesting, and I'm pretty sure everyone listening to you will be also interested in desire. So, can I ask you just a final remark from both of you, like um, connected to what do you expect at the end from the project? What is your because you already explained why you are here. So, what would be your your vision, your 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 target, your dream for this? It say that anthropologists, ethnologists always complicate things, uh, so they make them more complicated uh, uh, and not more simple. And that's, I think, it's our task. And I would like to see some of the concepts that we are dealing in our work, in our research, to uh, be transferred into the, let's say, common knowledge, like getting them more to people. Like Sonia mentioned already, the concept of home, how is it created, how the environment influences ourselves, and also the concept of space. And, and there are a lot of interesting anthropological concepts of space, and, and uh, this knowledge is important to get in also into the teaching materials, in our opinion. And also maybe somehow challenge the concepts uh, related to aging and uh, old age itself, uh, like the active aging idea or maybe also aging at place. That means that we somehow try to keep uh, uh, our seniors at the same place. But as Sonia mentioned, what does it mean when the place is changing? How does the changing place influences our lives? Um, and uh, this is for us the important thing, just just to be reflective also concerning ageism, for example, and how we as scholars sometimes not knowing, um, but unintended uh, 
like passing the the notion of ageism we are not aware about uh to to the public and and also with our expert language that means that we would like to try to challenge some of the usual concepts and that's what we hope to get uh, to the public and to the yes to the people <laughs> Very nice. What I also, if I might uh, add just shortly, uh, what I find important is that uh, this project is really connected to design for all, which means that, yes, of course, our target group and our focus in this case are seniors, but, but in the end, the, the, the environment should always be such that it is inclusive and uh, friendly to everyone, you know, so this this is the the principle which i would really like to be very much present in the curriculum which we will create in this yeah project. and that would also help to to take aside ageism because if we foresee him if we foresee it for everyone maybe this also helps to break some barriers in that sense right well exactly. Lubica and sonia it was so good to 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 have this talk i'm pretty sure that all of the other partners will be in trouble to to yes. making such a nice interview so <laughs> it was a pleasure as usual uh, and i i hope to get your feedback after the end of the project to see if we have if we actually were able to do it so <laughs> yeah looking thank forward to that. <laughs> and thank you Karina. Nice. thank you very much thank nice you. talking to you karina <laughs> <laughs>